got on the board first. Play action again to Reagan. Dysman. Warren, the tight end. Diving into the end zone. The Giants responded by turning to their top running threat, the small but always dangerous Joe Morris. Morris. That tied the score at seven, which is where it stood in the second quarter when the Redskins tried some trickery. But this flea flicker failed to fool Lawrence Taylor, who got the sack on Joe Theismann. And we knew something was wrong when Taylor popped up and gestured to the Washington bench for help. It was a broken leg for Theismann and the end of a storied career. The spotlight turned to an unknown backup named Jay Schrader, and he asserted himself on his very first pass attempt. Schrader and knocked inside the 15-yard line on a beautiful shot from Jay Schrader. That set the tone for Schrader, but his team still trailed 21-17 in the fourth quarter when they tried their second onside kick. They go with an onside kick once again. The ball is loose. Andy Hedden tried to handle the ball, and it was taken by Greg Williams, who hustled down under it. The Redskins marched steadily downfield behind Schrader, and then from 14 yards out, they went for the winning score. Schrader fires a shot to Didier, cuts down the Redskins will have to leave. And what a story is developing around Jay Schrader tonight. These were Jay Schrader's winning numbers last November. And tonight the story continues as Schrader leads the Redskins into Giants Stadium against Lawrence Taylor, Joe Morris, and the rest of the New York Giants. It's for a share of the lead in the tough NFC East. And you'll see it tonight on ABC's Monday Night Football. <laughs> Billy Kilmer, his first and ten for the Redskins. The ball just beyond their 30-yard line. The play fake. This is going for Roy Jefferson. Jefferson beats he Meadows. His score. On fourth down, goal to go at the one. Reverse. It's a reverse to the tight end. Gary Lewis. No, and he didn't get in. Oh, what a good defensive play. Great defensive play by all pro Mark Haynes. Haynes. Great play. I thought he had it to walk in. Second and nine. They come, safety blitz. Bill says, reach it. Timing play. Tipped and caught. And He's breaking gone. free is Johnson for the touchdown. And we can tell you Detroit against Chicago yesterday at Soldier Field, the Bears' offense didn't score a touchdown. But the defense really did a job as Eric Hipple went back to pass. He was sacked by Wilbur Marshall, who then recovered the fumble. And the linebacker moved in for the touchdown. That gave the Bears a 7 to nothing lead. Two more field goals, accounting for all of the Bears' scoring. Timeout here. Meanwhile, Green Bay led San Francisco yesterday 14 to nothing early in the game, but the Niners' defense really did the job. Randy Wright put it up 54 times. Unpropitiously here, however, as Ronnie Lott came up with the interception, and that gave San Francisco a 21 to 14 lead. As Ronnie Lott brought it back all the way, he returned at 55 yards, one of two interceptions for him. And the 49ers had the lead as Wright went back again. And with Green Bay trying to come from behind, it was Tory Nixon in the revamped San Francisco secondary who went all the way 88 yards this time. And the 49ers, minus Montana, of course, and with Kemp hurting and Morosky at quarterback, the defense doing the job. Two runbacks for touchdowns and 31-17 San Francisco. We're back at Giants Stadium, and it is the Washington Redskins and the New York Giants, longtime rivals in this NFC East. They really don't like each other. They play tough football games. They split over the past two years, each winning at home. And right now, the Giants are leading here at halftime 13 to 3. Of course, this winds up an interesting weekend to play. And remember, it was a week ago, the Minnesota took the Chicago Bears out of the unbeaten ranks. Well, it was an interesting day yesterday for Minnesota once again. 
Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The Cleveland Browns were in town. Let's pick up the action in the second quarter with the Vikings leading 10 to 3. Minnesota, third and goal on the Browns' eight yard line. The Vikings, Tommy Kramer's having a great year. Drops back, starts to run, finds Anthony Carter wide open in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota leading 17 to 3. In the third quarter, Wade Wilson is filling in at the punting roll for Minnesota. The punt is blocked by Frank Minifield. Felix Wright recovers the ball. It runs all the way for a touchdown. Minnesota leading 17 to 10. In the fourth quarter, Vikings on top, 20 to 13. Brown second and 10 on the Vikings 17-yard line. Curtis Dickey, looks like the Dickey of old, takes the handoff, goes up the middle, 17 yards for a touchdown. On the day for Dickey, 19 rushes, 106 yards. On the ensuing kickoff, Rufus Best returns the ball to the 17-yard line. He's hit there by Travis Tucker. Fumbles the ball, and Felix Wright recovers for Cleveland. The turnover gave Matt Barr a chance to put the Browns ahead with 146 to play. His 22-yard field goal split the uprights, and Cleveland won 23 to 20. The Vikings had one last chance to tie the game with 10 seconds remaining, but Tuck Nelson missed from 45 yards out. Anaheim Stadium in Anaheim, California, another big day for Eric Dickerson. In the second quarter, no score. David Archer is back for the Falcons looking over the middle. It's picked off by Mark Giroux. Archer only had 53 yards for the day as Giroux took it in from 22 yards out. Rams leading 7 to nothing. After a Gerald Riggs fumble, the Rams ball first and 10 on the Falcons' 15-yard line. Dickerson, who had 170 yards on the day, passed this time to number 81, David Hill, for a 15-yard touchdown. The Rams went out in front 14 to nothing. Now in the third quarter, Rams still leading 14 to nothing. Steve Dills, a quarterback for the Rams, fires over the middle to Michael Young. He's hit immediately and fumbles the ball. Number 26, James Britt, recovers for Atlanta. He goes 65 yards down the sideline for a touchdown. To cut the Rams' lead to 14 to 7. But it was too little and it was too late. The Rams win at 14 to 7. And next Monday night, we'll be in Chicago. It'll be the Bears with Walter Payton, the Rams with Eric Dickerson. Both on top, their respective divisions, and longtime bitter rivals. And it should be interesting uh, in more ways than one, Al. That soap opera continuing out there with the Chicago Bears. They are characters. Soap opera with the Bears, but they're seven and one. A soap opera of sorts with the Rams. Always a quarterback always. controversy. Bartkowski is hurt. Dills played yesterday. Some of the fans want to see Everett. Uh, the Rams have not been exciting, but they've been functional. They've done the job. They're six and two. Who knows who we'll see next week? We know we're going to see Dickerson. He gained 170 yards yesterday. He's Maybe right. that's all they need. He's right on a pace that would break his own single-season record. He's having a tremendous year. Good game here.